You're watching Community Conversations, a Concord TV production. Hello, welcome to Community Conversations. I'm Doris Ballard, your host. I am the Executive Director of Concord TV, and this is a production of Concord Community TV, and it is also a podcast. So if you want to let people know about it, if you happen to be tuning in, go to yourconcordtv.org. Tell them they can watch it anytime on demand on our playlist. My guests today are very, very special because it's been a while since we've been able to talk to someone from the New Hampshire Humanities, and we're happy to have them here. I want to welcome Anthony Poor, the Executive Director of New Hampshire Humanities. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you, Doris. Welcome. And I want to welcome Morgan Wilson. Morgan, you, you are involved with marketing. What is your official title? My official title is Communications and Media Specialist. Communications and Media Specialist. And how long have you been on the job? Uh, only about three weeks at this point. There we go. Okay, yeah. well, we're going to get to know all about you in a, minute, in a minute, so hang on. Anthony, we're very happy to have you here. Um, you have not been in the position as Executive Director for how long have you been with New Hampshire Humanities? I started with the Human uh, New Hampshire Humanities on March 1st of this year, 2018. So I'm about six, six months in. Six months in. And uh, let's find out a little bit about you before sure. you came to New Hampshire Humanities. Sure, sure. So uh, prior to taking on this role as executive director, um, I worked for the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, um, where I helped lead uh, their community and economic development efforts, both as a researcher, a policy analyst, um, and uh, really a, a technical assistance provider to a number of government and non-governmental organizations. And it, uh, prior to that, I worked as the assistant dean for the School of Community Economic Development at Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, and, but uh, to make a long story short, I started my career as a social worker, uh, working as a case manager, working with uh, homeless uh, individuals, particularly uh, uh, homeless women who are victims of battery. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I actually started my career at our local community action program years ago. So uh, raised, born and raised in Dayton, Ohio. I've been here a little over 20 years now. New Hampshire is my home. I'm a Granite Stater. But I still consider myself a bit of a Rust, a rust Belt kid, if you will, and, and those Midwestern values and the, that, that uh, kind of have kind of driven me uh, in my life. Well, what attracted you to this position when you saw it posted? Well, it was a culmination of everything I've been working towards. Um, first and foremost, it was an opportunity for me to take all that I've done across multiple sectors uh, in advance of, of the issues that I think are important. So we talk about the importance of civil society, we talk about the importance of dialogue, we talk about the importance of working across sector. My experience has allowed me to do that and I can manifest that, so manifest that in, in support of this organization. Um, I also am blessed to serve on a number of boards um, in this state, so whether it be through the Endowment for Health and the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund, Manchester Community College and so on, to take all of those experiences uh, in which this, this organization touches upon and to bring them to bear as well. So, it's really an opportunity for me to take my personal mission statement and take that and, 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 and align that with an organization uh, that has a similar mission statement. Um, and so there's symmetry. And so it just, it, for me, it was a no-brainer. Um, this is, I've been also been able to lead organizations and whether it be projects or programs locally or regionally, this is an opportunity for me to lead an organization and to really step out from the background and step to the forefront. So it was a challenge as well. Um, right. Sounds like it's a perfect fit that uh, everything that you have done up till now has just prepared you for this position at this time. I'd like to believe that. I suppose time will tell. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll bring some new things. We'll be talking about that yes, very soon. But let's get to know Morgan Wilson a little more. Uh, you're involved in marketing. You've only been there a few weeks. Yeah. So what is it about New Hampshire Humanities that you said, I want to work there? Well, I felt like... Well, I enjoyed where I'd worked previously, which, want, was, which was Colby Sawyer College. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to apply the skills and tools that I had learned and acquired at that position at a place where I was really passionate about the work that I was doing. Um, and as a previous English major, I am really passionate about the humanities and the way that they can change people's lives. So, and you've only yeah. been there a while, but what have you learned that you didn't know before, right from the onset? Was there anything? or I'm sure... There is for me, I know when I came here. Um, I feel like the most important thing I've learned is that every day I learn more and more how mm -hmm. great the people I work with are. Oh, uh, good answer. Yeah. Right. Thanks. And uh, well, 
11 em employees that you have working for New Hampshire Humanities. But, yes, ma'am. We have a total of 11, but, but combination touched, of both full-time and part-time. But you touch just 11 people, your partners, and we'll, we'll get to that. But first mm -hmm. of all, mm -hmm. what's the mission of New Hampshire Humanities? Well, I mean, our mission uh, statement is, is, is really, and I think it, 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 uh, it, it, it mirrors um, um, the important work we do, is, is really, and I'll use my language, creating a safe place for difficult conversations, right? Mm -hmm. That is essentially what we do. Uh, we do that through a, a multiple multitude of different ways. Uh, but, our, but, our, but, our, but our role, our responsibility as a convener, as a funder, as a catalyst for change, is to create spaces for very difficult conversations that brings a, the, 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 an understanding uh, and an appreciation for the human experience to bear. And so when we think about the humanities, I think, you know, there's, people think of them as being rather aloof, you know, this is language and linguistics and religion and history and so on. But if you had to really dumb it down, if, and to use my language, uh, and to put it in three buckets, I'd put it in these three buckets. It's around workforce preparation, that is, how do we learn critical thinking skills that we can apply in the workplace on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. It's about participation readiness. That is, what is my role as a citizen within the Granite State, and what do I need to know in terms of, of civility and civics to apply that? And then the last thing, it's about what I call existential readiness, which is, who am I? What's my, what's my part in this world, in this bigger place we live? Um, everyone wants to feel as if they're part of something larger than themselves. Right. And every day I hear young people in particular talking about their interest in wanting to belong being a part of something larger than themselves. And I think uh, the humanities provides a space uh, for those kinds of conversations. And really, I think those three buckets really represent the work that we do um, quite well. Excellent. Well, you mentioned, you touched upon something, uh, uh, having discussions that can be a little difficult. Certainly. And I'd like to read something of, uh, from a Joel Pett, Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a presenter. Mm -hmm. at one, in one of your programs, and he says, there's a dreadful thing at work in this country where people just can't bear to disagree with other people. I think it's actually better. I really like the company of people I disagree with. There's a possibility you could learn something from them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just but one of the quotes that I read or testimonials that I read about some of the programs. There's, there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. And then I looked, if anybody, please go to the website of New Hampshire Humanities. It's, um, it is NA, New Hampshire, nhhumanities.org. Mm -hmm. You just touch upon, you, you're all over New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at everything that you do. And before I start rambling, why don't we just go to some of the PowerPoint that you, that you uh, sure. showed? So, sure. And our wonderful director, Melissa Sweat, is going to pop some of these Mm -hmm. these uh, photos mm -hmm. up. So if you're just tuning in, um, this is Community Conversations, a program of Concord TV and a podcast of Concord TV. My guests are Anthony Poor and Morgan Wilson of the New Hampshire Humanities. And now let's uh, hear a little more about it. Sure. Stay focused. And, 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 yes, ma'am. <laughs> I will stay focused. And so just a real quick history lesson. Most people don't understand that New Hampshire Humanities is one of 56 humanities-based organizations across the United States. We've been operating here in New Hampshire for 44 years. And over the course of that 44 years, we've touched around 2 million lives in this state, which I think is extraordinary. I would argue and suggest to you that I think we're one of New Hampshire's best kept secrets. That being said, I was looking at some numbers even last year. Uh, we touched around 147,000 people uh, in the Granite State through a combination of, of 500 programs that were both kind mm -hmm. of face-to-face, -face, more traditional sage on the stage type of program delivery to some of our broadcast models that we've applied. Um, We've worked in 183 different communities, and we and we worked with over 273 nonprofit organizations, from community-based organizations to historical societies to libraries. It just depends on where we're at, mm -hmm. and and really who's who's asking us to work with them. Uh, we do our work primarily through partnerships, and so um, and we're thinking about our partnerships and the work that we do. Let's put our work into four different buckets. And so the first slide that will that, that the audience will see will be our slide on our Humanities to Go mm -hmm. program. Now that is our probably our, our most far-reaching uh, program, uh, no doubt, and that's our Speakers Bureau. And traditionally a nonprofit organization will come to us and say, we'd like to have this program delivered uh, in, in, at this particular time, this particular day. Keep in mind, those 450 programs that we did last year in our Humanities to Go program were all free of charge. Mm -hmm. that's wonderful. This is all program that we make available free of charge through our federal and state 
partners, right? And remind, and let me remind you that uh, our federal, our relationship with the NEH, National Endowment for the Humanities, and individual contributors are the primary source of capital for organization. We receive very little state funding. So all of this program, while it's provided in the state free of charge, uh, we're able to do that um, with limited support from the state. So we do a lot with a little bit, frankly, and I think that's the New Hampshire way. Absolutely. But again, we have our Humanities to Go program, our most far-reaching program. That's 450 uh, programs throughout the state. I think in that one, uh, we had about 12,500 people actually come through the doors last year. We also have our community project grants. Now our community project grants, which is, which is hopefully the next slide, you'll see we have two different buckets. And so that's our, that's our role as funder. So we have our quick grants, which are intended to be quick. That's the nature of them and responsive to individual community needs. So this is $1,000 or less. These are typically one-off events um, that have a humanities focus that we are able to support. And then we have our larger quarterly grants, and those are $10,000 or less. Oftentimes, these programs are almost serials or modules. And so mm -hmm. most recently, I think our Elephant in the Room series is an example of that, where with the Portsmouth Playhouse, forgive me, they put together four one-act plays that focused on very difficult issues. And there was also a talk back. And so we focused on issues of human trafficking, as an example, mm -hmm. income inequality, uh, the opioid crisis, not just the crisis itself, but its impact on families and so on. So these are very difficult issues to, to discuss and not ones that are, that are easily brought forward. But that's an example of what that grant uh, is really intended to, 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 to support. Um, we have our Connections programs, one of the programs I'm probably most proud of as well. That should be our third slide that we're seeing right now. And that's our program where really a support to a number of our literacy programs throughout the state. So this year we'll provide 30 different, um, 30 program sites within the, each one of the program sites with a four-part series uh, where we we'll work either with our ESL providers, our ABL providers or adult basic literacy providers, and or our work in prisons. And I think that's what's most important. So with our ESL work and our ABL work, we provide books free of charge to their classes, and they use our literature as a supplement to the ESL training. Again, when I talked about workforce part, 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 uh, participation or readiness, mm -hmm. this is an example of that, particularly when we think about where we see opportunities for our younger demographic and our younger employees here in the state, particularly primarily driven by new Americans, we can help support that work. I had never thought of the New Hampshire Humanities in, with respect to workforce preparation. Um, mm -hmm. Very interesting because you have a lot of young millennials, a lot of young people participate, and I know that you hired uh, recently hired Morgan in mm -hmm. marketing, and um, why don't I ask Morgan now, as, what appeals to you when you first started here or when you found out more about New Hampshire Humanities a, as a young, younger uh, demographic? Um, I also really like the Connections program as a whole because I see it taking a place of social responsibility, mm -hmm. um, and I find that very appealing, and I think a lot of members of the younger generations do as well. Um, we want to see it active in our communities and helping people that need assistance. And I actually got to go to one of the English as a Second Language classes and meet some of the students. And it was an amazing experience. Uh, they're very nice and friendly and the teachers were great. Um, and then another thing I think that's coming up that would, is also of interest to people my age is the Ideas on Tap, where um, we're going to discuss a variety of topics um, at different uh, bars and venues mm -hmm. around Concord and Anthony can probably speak in more detail about some of that. That's great. Oh. Yeah, that's one of our newer projects but I don't want to get mm -hmm. to in a minute but I did okay. want to circle back just to the connections programs. I think sure. this is really really important too so not only is it support with our ESL and our ABL providers and I, I'm glad you picked up on that because at the end of the day when we look at our state which generally has declining populations the three cities that actually have increased in their population uh, are Concord, Manchester, and Nashua. Why is that? Well, that's the influx of new Americans. It's also important to note that those actually have the youngest populations in our state. So we talk about a state that's getting older. Well, those actually cities are getting younger, and that is our future workforce. And so making sure they have the prerequisite English skills are a prerequisite to getting a, to gainful employment and supporting our workforce development needs here in the state. So let, let's not forget that. I think it's important that people understand that linkage. Second, but, but more importantly, I'm on the Connections Program, the program I'm most Part of the program I'm most interested in is our work in prisons. And so when we think about this work, um, you know, I'll give you an example I use often. Um, we have about uh, uh, 
we, about one fifth of the of the I think the world's population, right? Mm -hmm. For a pretty small percentage, five percent, something like that. It's five percent rather. Forgive me, but yet we house around twenty five percent of the world's prisoners, hmm. right? And I think we all are aware of the uh, disproportionate impact on communities of color, particularly black and brown, through maximum sentencing laws made famous, particularly through Michelle Alexander's work called the New, New Jim Crow. That being said, these seventy percent of these prisoners do get out, and they return f into the communities from which they came. And so our Connections program provides an opportunity for these persons, previously incarcerated persons, or persons who are actually in the system right now to stay connected to their families through literature. So we provide books in the federal and state prisons, both male and female. The prisoners will read those books, will record them, and then we'll send those recordings home with those books to the young people to stay connected. And or they'll use their, tele their telephone time or Skype time, and they have a, a version of that, so they can read to their, to the, to their um, sons or daughters. Mm -hmm to maintain those principal primary connections. It's our small attempt to reduce recidivism rates. Because if they were to maintain those significant family connections, ideally it would have a positive impact on their uh, going back or not going back uh, into the system. And so it's our small um, contribution to reducing recidivism rates. Um, and that we think that's important. If you're in Laconia, you're in Berlin, you care. Right. Um, you care about that. And so. I, I know I'm rambling here, and I apologize. That's fine. No, no, no. no. Uh, now, in your position, you uh, is in marketing and media communications, correct? Yeah. Um, what is exactly that that you do to get the word out about what New Hampshire Humanities? Because, as you said, we Conquer TV, Conquer TV, also are, are sometimes a best kept secret. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought I knew a lot about New Hampshire Humanities, but I'm just amazingly blown away by everything that you offer and can't wait now to go to some of your and you you some of your programs yes ma'am but they're all over the state right yes ma'am so how do you get the word out do you have an idea uh work in working with anthony and the rest of the staff as to some of the exciting things you want to start implementing in communication uh yeah we were thinking of doing a lot more video work and video producing because it's kind of the way of the future it's a lot more accessible catches people's attentions a bit more um so that's one direction that we're working in that we haven't previously worked as much in. Um, and then I also think it's just something that Anthony's doing, which is working with a lot more local organizations. And by building those connections, it spreads our name. That's right. People are more familiar with us. But, but I wouldn't minimize your work in social media either. Yeah. And so really trying to leverage social media mm -hmm. uh, in ways that we haven't in the past. Um, it's also a recognition that uh, if we're going to attract a younger demographic to this work, we need to meet people where they are. And right now they're in the spaces known as Twitter, right? You know, as an example, and Instagram. Instagram, Twitter. And we need to meet people right. where they are, where they're at, particularly if we want to attract uh, right. folks who reflect um, Morgan's experience, or people, or young people who reflect my daughter's experience at 17 mm -hmm. and 14, mm -hmm. and give them a reason to want to care about right. the work. Right. Um, we think that's really critically right. important. Well, if you're just tuning in, this is Community Conversations, a program created by Concord TV, your ConcordTV.org. If you are interested in uh, of watching the entire program, you can go to yourconcordtv.org and find it on our playlist on demand anytime you want. And it's also a podcast. So, my guests today are Anthony Poor, the uh, executive director of New Hampshire Humanities, and with him is the brand new marketing and media communications person, Morgan Wilson. So, um, getting to know a lot about you, getting all excited now. Special projects is mm -hmm. that? Are you? Are we done with the? Connection slide? We or? are done with the connection I, slide. I'm just amazed at how how much you have everything at the tip of your fingers. Good on you. But, on, really. but wait, there's more. I mean, more. amazing, but wait, there's more. All right, special projects. <laughs> well, special projects historically has been our work, and most people are aware that work through our work with veterans. Mm -hmm. And so, again, which is our small uh, um, effort um, to really positively impact the lives of veterans once they return from, from their experiences. Um, and so, um, for example, we had our, 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 um, our uh, uh, Voices program where um, those who returned from the war experience used uh, literature and particularly used the Odyssey uh, to talk about their experience and to share their experience amongst those who had served. You know, it's a unique experience to have served. My father served. My grandfather served. And they, they wouldn't always want to share their experiences with me as someone who didn't serve. But for them to come together, those who have served, and share their experiences uh, we think, again, is a small contribution we can make to thank them for their service and ideally reduce suicide rates and so on, as you know, as something uh, of concern for all of us. And so 
if we can create a space to have these difficult conversations uh, that support their, their transition back into regular, you know, um, kind of society outside their military experience, we think we, that's an important work. Um, Morgan had referenced something I'm really excited about, which is a new effort of ours called Ideas on Tap. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity for us to, again, bring uh, uh, more topical air issues in, in abnormal venues. We want to meet people where they're at. And so, um, for example, we've identified four topics that, have been ra that have, we've been asked to, to focus our attention on. Um, and this is, this, is, this is important for us. And so the first one we're going we're gonna to host at the Barley House here in Concord, for example, on October 30th. Um, and, and the title of this event is called Making Your Way in Post-Fact America. And it looks at the, the, the impact of quote-unquote fake news uh, on civil society and the impact and the increase of tribalism and, um, that we see and we're experiencing not only here in the state, but we're seeing nationally play out every day. So that'll be at the Barley House on October 30th. Where we're providing academics, um, Adam Sexton from MUR and HPR and others to mm -hmm. entertain in this conversation. Another topic we'll be focused on through this venue will be issues of wealth and income inequality. We'll be hosting that in Portsmouth, uh, at a local brew pub there. Another area we're particularly focused on, which is driven by Henry Kissinger of all people, the 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 um, the look at uh, artificial intelligence technology and how that intercedes with hu the humanities. There's something for everyone in the programs in New Hampshire humanities. Well, the idea is what we want to do is we want to honor the past. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes what people will hear me say, it's never an either or, it's an and. And what I mean by that, it's New England um, uh, lighthouses mm -hmm. and its issues of income and wealth and equality. It's New Hampshire quilts and its issues related to the opioid crisis and its impact on families. Understood. We need to, and we need to continue to do what we've done in the past and respect that, mm -hmm. but we also need to, we need to react and respond to the changing landscape in which we're operating in. And if we're going to be the best we can be, we have an obligation, responsibility of stores of public funds to do to to impact as many lives as possible. Well, this is very exciting, and we're just about running out of time. So now I would like to wrap it up by asking either one or both of you, what is your vision for the for the immediate future and the long range future of New Hampshire Humanities, Anthony? Well, I'll start, and then Morgan, you can chime in. Mm -hmm. um, We've adopted a, a philosophy, I mean, what I call a three-legged stool, and it's around access, innovation, and elevation. And real quick, access means that the widest audiences possible have the opportunity to participate in our programming. So imagine we're a tent, no matter which side of the tent uh, you want to come in on, there's a seat ready, willing, and able for you to sit into it. When we talk about innovations, how can we deliver our programming in unique and different ways, utilizing voice and video and technology to impact people, again, meet them where they're at, and use technology as a complement to the traditional sage on the stage type of delivery format. And lastly, around elevation, it's elevating the work of our partners uh, because that's through and how we do our work. And so we believe in our role as convener, it's, we have an obligation responsibility to lift them up uh, in significant ways uh, that we haven't done in the past. Morgan? Morgan. Um, I, again, I did just start, so, but I feel like my vision is or what I'm hoping for to change is that I really can see New Hampshire humanities adapting and evolving to a point where they're like beyond our initial audience, just more young people and more of the community coming to our programs. Because I do think even our existing programs have a lot to learn and they are very interesting. And as we develop new ones that reflect more accurately the modern world that we live in, more and more people will be drawn to them and will learn from them. Mm -hmm. um, That's wonderful. Great. Wow. Yeah. I want to thank you both, Anthony Poor and uh, Morgan Wilson of New Hampshire Humanities for being on the program. You do know that this station belongs to the people of Concord and the organizations that serve the, the Concord region. Yes, so uh, you're all about collaborations and we're thrilled at Concord TV to be able to collaborate with you both. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. You. I appreciate thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Community Conversations. If you just caught us at the tail end of this program, Go to yourconcordtv.org and you can watch it on demand and share it with any of your friends and families. And don't forget, go check out nhhumanities.org for right. everything that they do. And let's start meeting each other at some of those, those presentations. All right, like bye now. You're watching Community Conversations, a Concord TV production.